Shabbos, everybody. Good Shabbos. This week's Parsha, Parsha Shmini, we speak about a tragedy that happened to the Bnei Aaron, who they were a carbon for all of Kal Yisrael. As Moshe Rabbeinu tells Aaron Akoye, we cry by a Kodesh, that I thought it would be me and you, the Gedele Yisrael, that would be the carbon for Kal Yisrael at this ostentatious time. And it wasn't them, it was actually the Bnei Aaron. And Moshe told Aaron as a Nichom that you should know that really they were very great tzaddikim. And um, we have to accept that which HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells us. In reality, um, there's a conversation that happens that there's no conversation. Moshe tells this to Aaron, and Aaron, Vayidom Aaron. Aaron does not respond at all. I would like to tell you, I have a very close friend who unfortunately, he lost a brother of his, which was almost like a twin. His brother of his was, I think, 10 months younger than him. They were very, very close. And this is about 15 years ago. His brother, just more, probably about 20 years ago, just didn't wake up one morning. And he was a very successful rogue. And I came to the Menachem Mobile, and there was a difficulty what to say. Came to my mind, I have a friend who actually right now is going through a different Zara. And this friend of mine lost a son, his only son. At that time, he had other children. We only had one son. And I came to the Shiva, and he said to me, so tell me, Vayidom Aaron, Aaron didn't comment on the fact that he lost his son. What was it that Aaron was going to say that he didn't say? So it obviously means he held his tongue, didn't say something which he would have wanted to have said. What is there to say? This is a question that he asked me at this very painful time in his life. He was looking to find some way to understand that which is going on around him. And he was clueless. And he reached out to me and asked me, so tell me what was Aaron going to say? What does it mean he didn't say anything? And I gave him the following marshal. This is a partial answer to the question. Imagine one walks into the base Medrash and he sees Reb Kiveger, the Chassam Seifer, fighting about a Taisvis. And he lends an ear to the conversation and he realizes, wow, he just did share on that Taisvis just yesterday. He knows that Taisus very well. So what do you think he's going to do? He's going to listen to the conversation. And when he realizes that Rabbi Kiva Eger obviously didn't understand Taisus, he's going to explain it to Rabbi Kiva Eger. Is that what he's going to do? Of course not. Why? Because he understands that whatever he understands in the Taisus, Rabbi Kiva Eger understood that too, and so did the Flam Cipher, and he has no place to say anything at all. So what will he do? He will be a vayidom. You know, even though he thinks that he understands something, he really will understand that the subject that's around him is far greater than he is. Vayidom Aaron. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation that's greater than we are, and we try to find something to say, and Seichel will tell us that it's better off just not saying anything because the subject is too large for us and what we're going to say will not answer the difficulty that's in place. We're supposed to hang our heads and wait for our Kodesh Baruch Hu to give us some kind, some understanding. Chazal tell us, Rashi tells us, that why is the parsha of Shtuya Yayin written in the Torah immediately following the story of the dying of the two Bnei Aaron. And Rashi tells us because Aaron was Vayidom Aaron, Bishar that, that he was quiet, he was Zaycha that another Parsha should be written in the Torah and it should be given through him. And that was the Parsha of Shtuya Yai. The question is, why was that the Parsha that was chosen to be given through him? There are many Parshas in the Torah. What's so special about that Parsha that seems to have a connection to that which Aaron did or that meter that he had or a place where he was at that time. 
So there are many answers given to this question. The Kliyokar has a few of them. First of all, I don't know if you've ever seen a drunken person, but drunks usually babble. They talk and talk and talk, and then they talk and talk and talk, and then you just like to get on your nerves and you want to get away from them because they're talking so much. The person who he has the, per the ability to, to cl clasp his lips close and not speak, that's Aaron Akoyen. He is the person that it's Roy for the Parsha of Shtias Yayin. Because he knows how to, as they say in English, hold his liquor. Meaning to say, he knows how to control his mouth. And that's why that Parsha was given to him. According to others, the reason why it was given to him is because the Gemara tells us, the Gemara Psachim tells us that wine is supposed to be given to those that are in Avelos. And Aaron wanted to have this wine, because wine helps a person overcome his difficulties. And the Torah told him, but you, Aaron Akoyin, you are a special situation, and you don't have a heter to partake of the wine. Just like a person doesn't have a heter, Koyin doesn't have a heter to be metamit his kravim. You're in a special situation. You have to deal with this issue as an individual without any crutches. That's another reason why this was the parsha that was given to him. And a third reason which is given, which I think is an incorporation of both of the two reasons, is a very famous chazal said on Purim, Michnas Yayim Yotza Soit, person takes in wine and then Soit has come out. A person who knows how to drink, when and what to drink, he has the ability to delve into the Torah and reach levels of Torah that are called Soit. I believe that at this time, when all of us are looking for answers, the first thing that we have to realize is that we're not necessarily the ones to be the forecasters. Somebody asked me this week, he asked me a question about people going out and doing certain things and in an ostentatious manner, whether it is okay with the with the Misrat uh, Abriyot or it's not okay with the Misrat Abriyot, if it's legal or illegal, so the person has to realize that there's time when we are in Sakona and where a person is supposed to not be being polite, being sticking out as he's, you know, a target, so to speak, for the for the Malach HaMavis, Cholila. We're in a time that we have to be a Vayido. We're in a time that we have to hang our heads and we have to strengthen our observance. I'll just mention that here we are at a time right after Pesach, and we have a parsha that deals with dietary laws of the whole year. All of Pesach, people are makbir on a mashu of a mashu. Then it comes after Pesach, and we relax. We should take with us a little bit of the chumras of Pesach into our bidud. Not necessarily that I'm saying a person has to be machmer on every single chumrah that there is, but we're in a time where a person has to relate to the Tzoros of Klal Yisro. There are many, many people who are at a loss. We too have to have some kind of a loss. I've said this over once in the Pirkei Elvis year, I'm saying it again, that um, Rav Aaron Leib, when there was a conflict going on down south, he didn't sleep in his bed because there are Jewish soldiers that are not in a comfortable situation. How should I sleep in my bed? Now, he didn't send his mattress down south. But the point is that we have to live with the tzara, live with the tzara of our friends, and we're at a time that there are people, I have a very close friend, two very close friends today that are sitting in Shiva, they lost their mother, the Levaya yet didn't happen in America, and they're in a situation of Vayito. We should be used this time to latch on to the meat of our own and not talk so much and not talk so much, and we should be zoicha mirz Hashem, that we should soon have the parasha of Yayin, we shall have the parasha of Mesochim, and we should all come together shortly, not only in Abba Shalom, but we shall all come together, mirz Hashem, in the base of Migdash Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, what do you say? Uh, thank you very much.
You're welcome. Okay. Thank you.